This is Jason Cade, and you are listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio. You're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio, featuring the interactive interview, courtesy of WrestlingEpicenter.com. So what you gonna do? Let me talk to you, dummies. Oh, yeah. You're where it's at. If you're smart like me, you gotta listen. And if you don't listen to it, I'll come out of your computer and body slam your ass. Don't be a Melvin. I will scar you. <laughs> Open your third eye. Woo! It's gonna be cool. Oh, what a rush. It's showtime! We had a lovely conversation. <laughs> to the interactive interview. Interactive wrestling crazy. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. We're so glad you could attend. Come inside, come inside. Welcome to another edition of Interactive Wrestling Radio right here on WrestlingEpicenter.com. Joining me in just a few moments will be our special guest of the week. He is an MLW, Major League Wrestling Superstar, the one and only Jason Cade joins us for the first time ever. Great interview with the great guy. I think he's got great things ahead of him, both in MLW and around the wrestling circuit. Just an incredible talent, really. Uh, If you haven't seen what he's been doing lately, check out what they're posting on YouTube, MLW Fusion Episode 20. They just had a great match that stole the show with his former TBD tag partner, Jimmy Yuta. So check that match out, and I think you guys will really enjoy it. And get caught up on MLW on BN Sports every Friday night at 8 p.m. on the BN Sports TV network. If you're not sure if you get it, check your cable box, check your direct TV listings, check your dish networks. Just make sure you get it because it's worth having. If you like sports, there's a lot of great stuff on there. Uh, various sports, various stuff from around the world. And of course, the best of it all is, in my opinion, Major League Wrestling. Feeling a little under the weather, guys. You can probably hear that in my voice today. Was going to do an introduction with my buddy Patrick about All In, which, by the way, was a home run. It was a love letter from Cody Rhodes to the entire wrestling world, but more so to the legacy of a man who appears on the MLW intro the one and only American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. He also appears on our intro, too. He said, this is going to be cool. Um, Dusty Rhodes, if you will. Great tribute to his legacy. And if you think about it, Dusty was a bit of a maverick himself. So Cody doing this show is by far the biggest thing that happened in wrestling this week. Probably the biggest thing that's happened this half of the year so far. That is, of course, until Thursday. Because MLW is in Fort Lauderdale, Florida at the War Memorial. And where better to have war games than at the War Memorial. And our guest this week will be appearing there. So I hope you guys enjoyed All In. We had Flip Gordon on leading into All In. Man, was that foretelling as we talked a little bit about All In. Just two days before he was a part of one of the best matches on that show. Uh, He ended up facing Jay Lethal after winning the over-budget Battle Royal. Losing effort, but he got the Hulk up on pay-per-view. So he's the first guy to do that in probably 12 years, right? That's pretty cool. And um, he got defeated by Jay Lethal, who was wearing Macho Man's first-ever appearance in WCW gear. Macho Man wore it on WCW Saturday night back in December of 1994. Here we are. 24 years later almost, and he wears that in the ring and defeats Flip Gordon to retain his Ring of Honor world title. Of course, like I said, our guest this week will also be in action the next day at War Games. It is Jason Cade. So without me bloviating any further, let's get to that interview. Thank you guys again for tuning in to the Wrestling Epicenter, to Interactive Wrestling Radio. And now let's get to the Interactive Interview. Want your advertisement here? Check out WrestlingEpicenter.com and shoot us an email. You can have your ad appear on our podcasts as well as on our website. Once again, check out WrestlingEpicenter.com and contact us. Yes, 
This is Colonel Robert Parker, and you're in the Wrestling Epicenter. Available now in the archives at interactivewrestlingradio.com. It's our exclusive interview with the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. So no, I, I, we respect each other in the ring and what we've done. And there's a respect there. And, there, and even though if you would say something bad, he kept coming back to that respect thing. Uh, people had told me, but there's a respect there. But it's, a, it's business. Business is business with me and him. This classic 2005 interview can be heard at WrestlingEpicenter.com and InteractiveWrestlingRadio.com. Welcome back to Interactive Wrestling Radio. My name is James Walsh, and on the Newsmaker line with me right now is an MLW superstar getting ready for tomorrow night's War Games. It is Jason Cade. Mr. Cade, are you with me? Uh, I think superstar is an understatement. I am the superstar in MLW. I love the right. new attitude. Yeah, we'll get. We'll definitely get to the new attitude, the new stripes that you're showing here in MLW TV. Uh, but I wanted to talk a little bit about MLW TV. Uh, as a guy who grew, well, I don't want to say grew up. I was in my 20s by the time the first run happened. But as a guy who watched the first run of MLW, I'm glad to have it back. It's a great show to watch on B in Sports. How has the relationship been for you guys in MLW with B in Sports? No, they've been great. They uh they promote us uh, every week, and we're all over their social media. They have us on. Uh, they upload our episodes every Saturday. So if you miss it, if you if you happen to miss the uh, episode that airs on Friday, you can always turn around and catch the replay on Saturday on YouTube. And uh, they've been they've been great having us in for commercials and, and media stuff. So yeah, interviews been you know the relationship with being has been amazing. Very cool, very cool. And I think it has opened a lot of new doors for the MLW brand because you guys are, you are, like you said, you're everywhere right now, so that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, we're we're just, MLW guys just popping up all over. Absolutely. All right, so I always like to ask a question about your old days, and of course the focal point will be on MLW, but you were trained by one of the MLW originals. Uh, he was there for a short time, and that's screaming Norman Smiley. Kind of wanted to get pick your brain a little bit. Did Norman Smiley put anything in your mind that maybe sticks out more than anything else when he was uh, involved in your training? Uh, well, Norman always uh, he always would would tell us like uh, a match just is not just about you know yourself. It's two guys working together to make the match good. So I've always taken that. that it's not just about me. It's Very about cool. it's it's about everybody. It's about uh, making the making both guys and the refs and well, whoever's involved with the show to guide. It, it's about making everybody look good. So, Very cool. I like that. That's, that's I always like to get those little tidbits in from the guys who I consider to be the greats, like Screaming Norman. Absolutely. Norman knows. He's probably forgotten more about wrestling than any of us, any of us will ever learn. He knows how to get in and out of anything. He's like one of the smartest people I've ever got gotten a chance to sit down and talk with and be in a ring with. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now you were a part of TBD Team TBD with Jay yeah. 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 So I talked about our. We were going to talk a little bit about your new stripes here. Um, seemed like you were a little bit more happy-go-lucky, a little bit more of the nice guy when when the team was going on. But now you've taken a turn. Uh, first of all, thoughts on your teamwork with Jimmy Yuta in Team TBD before things went south? I mean, I, can't, I, I guess you can call it teamwork. It was just me trying to cover for Jimmy's mistakes most of the time. Uh, that, if you call that teamwork. <laughs> like if, 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 if it wasn't for Jimmy, we'd be tag team champions. So. Very cool. Well, uh, we saw the match that you guys had last week. You mentioned you can check it out on YouTube right now. Uh, thanks to be in sports. A lot of people online are saying you guys stole that episode by having the best match of the night. Are you surprised by the positive fanfare you guys got for your match? No, I'm not because I know what I bring to the table. And, I mean, I had had, had to, you know, drag Jimmy along with me like we do when we, when we were tagging. So, but, you know, he's just he's benefiting from being in the ring with me again. But that's, that's over. That's over now. It's a, it's, a, it's a new day in MLW for Jason Cade. 
I got a new attitude, a bad attitude, by the way. And yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> and yeah, uh, I don't have to deal with Jimmy Yuta anymore. Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about good things. Try to bring right, me down man. on my on my Wednesday afternoon. It's the no, eve of I'm... war games. Don't bring me down, yeah. man. Well, you mentioned war games. Let's talk about it. We know you have a match schedule for tomorrow evening. Uh, you're going to be facing Myron Reed, and in I your fire. corner is going to. Yeah, there you go. And you've got your partner in your part, uh, in your corner as well, the gentleman, Rhett, who helped you. Uh... Well, let's not get into that. Let's talk about Myron. How are you looking forward to your match against Myron tomorrow night at War Games? Well, I've known Myron for quite some time. And Myron's a great, great athlete. Like, I've seen him, I've seen him kill it more times than I can count. But in life, right. there are Michaels and there are Tito's. And Team TBD, I was obviously the Michael, and Jimmy was the Tito. And at War Games tomorrow night, or I don't know when I don't know when this airs, but at War, I, I will say I'll just say it in general, at War Games, I'm going to take care of another Tito and make an example out of Myron, and show everyone why I'm the premier star in the ML, not just the middleweight division, in all of MLW. Very cool. So let's let's decode that a little bit because some of our listeners. Sometimes don't get my references. And I got the reference. So Shawn Michaels, and then you're referencing Tito Santana. Tito. No, B&B. I'm actually I'm actually referencing Michael Jackson and the rest of oh, Jackson the, Five. Oh, the Jackson. <laughs> see, I was yeah. I see my yeah. wrestling dork thinking you were talking about wrestlers. Oh uh, no, All no, right. I was talking about I was talking about uh, I was talking about Michael and Jackson Five. I was clearly the Michael of Team DVD. I would agree. I would agree with that. So. But we can talk all about right. Shawn Michaels if, if you want. Shawn Michaels is the, to me, is the greatest wrestler of all time. My favorite wrestler. But I, I don't even know what I would do if I met Shawn Michaels. I don't even know. Very cool. He's been on this show. It's been a long time, about 13 years, but he's been on this show. So we've always loved having uh, talking about Shawn Michaels. That's actually why I thought you were talking when you said. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Um, when I said when I said Michaels and, T- and, and Tito's, I was talking about Michael yeah. Jackson and the Jackson Five. Yeah, <laughs> well, I might edit that part out because I, I sound like a fool. Oh well. Uh, what is your relationship with Rhett Giddens? Rhett is a buddy of mine. Who, uh, if you have followed us, we've actually tagged with Rhett in a six-man tag against the Dirty Blondes and uh, Perot at the Stud Stable, actually. Right. Or if that's what you want to call them, on a six-man tag. And I saw in Rhett something I didn't see in, in Jimmy: a fire. And, and a hunger to win. And Red actually listened. Jimmy didn't listen. So I decided to say, to Red, hey, man, you want to go to the top. If you want to go to the top, you got to align yourself with me. You got to follow Jason K's lead. Because I'm going to take him to the top. Because I'm going to the top. Very cool. All right. So you mentioned in a prior interview that I checked out at doing my research for you, uh, which is how I knew you were a Shawn Michaels fan, by the way. But... um. Yeah, you mentioned that one of the dream opponents you'd like to face would be a guy that's actually now on the MLW roster, and that's Rich Swan. Um, first of all, have you already wrestled Rich Swan since that interview was done? And second of all, do you think that you guys could tear it down if you ever got to do it in MLW? Uh, since the interview was done, I don't believe I. Ha- I don't even know when what interview you're you're speaking of. Um, but because I've met I've mentioned I've mentioned Rich Swan a, a few interviews. We wrestled one time, and it was. I believe it was 2015. That was one of his last matches before he went to WWE. Um, mm-hmm. And I haven't gotten to wrestle him since he's come back. So I'm hoping that that happens soon. I hope the MLW always listening. And me and Rich Swan would, if you thought me and Jimmy Uta stole the whole episode, me and Rich Swan would steal the whole series. Excellent, excellent. Very cool. Um, MLW makes its name by doing things a little bit differently than everybody else. We saw that with Battle Riot. Thoughts on the concept that MLW puts into some of their things, like War Games, like Battle Riot, where they have a theme to each of their major shows? I mean, I think that... I think you have to make, think outside the box, because everyone does everything the same way, and, and you, you don't stand out. I think, I think MLW does a good job of, of making things different, so it's a fresh, a fresh product for fans. Because pro wrestling is pro wrestling. Whether it's WWE, whether it's Impact, whether it's 
Ring of Honor, New Japan. It's, it's all pro wrestling. So what makes you stand out? And I, I think MLW is doing a good job of making themselves stand out from the pack to give people a different perspective and a fresh, a fresh, uh, uh, a fresh take on pro wrestling. Very good. All right. So, of course, this past weekend, the wrestling world was run by All In. Everybody was paying attention to All In. As an independent guy, what do you think of the success of that show and how basically the independent world got to sta- steal the show, steal the stage for one night? Uh, I thought you, you, you were breaking up a good year. Oh, thoughts on All In and the success of All In and how independent wrestling got a chance to steal the spotlight for that one night? I think it was great. I think we need stuff like that because it shows that you can, you can do it yourself and you can, and you can draw money as an, as an independent promotion and it should be motivating for everyone that wasn't a part of it. And everyone that was a part of it too. Everyone that's on the, on the Indies should be motivated and feel, and feel good after all in because it's not just a success for Cody and the Bucks and those guys it's success for all of us. Very cool. I agree. And uh, you talked about crossovers and, and things of that nature with uh, All In. You've been a part of that with, with uh, Impact Wrestling. Did a, did a show where you faced off. You were in there as well. Thoughts on how open wrestling is right now to where, you know, we talked about Rich Swan. Rich Swan is signed to Impact, but he appears in MLW. Uh, Austin Aries is the Impact champion. He appears on MLW and on Ring of Honor. And Pentagon, I don't think there's a night last week that Pentagon wasn't in the main event of one of the nights on, on my cable box. So thoughts on how open wrestling is right now, where you guys have the ability to maybe float around a little bit and, and work for various companies that maybe you couldn't have worked for before. I think, I mean, that, that, like, that's what made all in so, so successful. It's like guys working together. Like everyone has to work together to, if, if, everyone, if everyone works together, it, Everyone, everyone wins. Everyone succeeds. Just like Norman told me, was just with making a match. Two guys working together for the benefit of the match. With all these companies working together for the benefit of wrestling as a whole, it's just going to make us all more money and all more get us all more exposure uh, at the end of the day. So I'm all Very for cool. everyone working together. Very cool. Very good. All right. So on your MLW profile, it makes a point of talking about your interests outside of the ring. And it says nerd culture is one of your <laughs> major interests. Could you could you explain that term? What? How do you mean by nerd culture? Honestly, I cannot explain that term because I did not write that, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> hold on. Uh, um, I'm 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 in the I'm in the video games. Been uh you know watching wrestling and uh and watching you know comedy specials and pretty much everything. I'm I'm I'm, I'm a fan of secret fan of Disney. Uh, big big basketball fan. Uh if you pay the pay attention to my Twitter, it's usually during basketball season it's just me complaining about the Knicks. So yeah, there you go. Uh, but uh I'm 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 open to like a, to a lot of different things. That's just their culture. I don't know who coined yeah. that term. <laughs> I think it was Chris Hardwick who turned it, but there you go. All right, so you mentioned you're a New Yorker. I grew up in northern New Jersey. You mentioned the Knicks. Was it cool for you to perform? Uh, I know you've probably done it a million times, but for the company that's kind of bringing you to the forefront a little bit, MLW, to perform at Battle Riot in New York, was that cool for you to to have that experience? Yeah, that that, that was great to to be there in, in my hometown, and I had some family come by who's never seen me wrestle before. So that was a great experience. And the crowd was real hot that night, too. Great. Very cool. So I'm going to let you go with the one final question. And it's kind of a kind of a cream puff question for you. But what do you hope to accomplish here in the next couple of, uh, of months here with MLW and going forward in your wrestling endeavor? Oh, easy. I, just, I want to be not only the MLW middleweight champion, I want to be MLW heavyweight champion. I want to win every championship for every company that I work for. Hey, yeah, cool. that's, so, that's what the game's about, winning winning championships, right? If you're not winning a championship, then what are you really doing? Very cool. All right, man. Well, I appreciate it. Hey, before I let you go, do you mind if I ask for one little favor from you? What's up? Do you mind if I ask for a station ID? Just saying this is Jason Cade, and you're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio. Sure. 
This is Jason Cade, and you are listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio. This is the Wrestling Epicenter. For over 15 years, we've brought you the top names in professional wrestling for exclusive interviews. Everybody you see here has been interviewed by our site. But we're more than just interviews. So be sure and check out WrestlingEpicenter.com for news, results, information, and of course our store. WrestlingEpicenter.com, your number one source for wrestling information. 